Hello, beta testers. Monday, October 4th, 2021, over a year after launch, a bug in Marvel's Avengers freezes the Xbox host live on stream, causing them to awkwardly end the dev chat after some hot silence. Three minutes frozen after a year, homie. Yeah. Move over, devs falling through the map. Move over, literally crossing your fingers on stream, hoping the game works. We have a new contender, or I guess an old one, since these bugs have long claimed the heavyweight belt and have easily gone undefeated for a year. Sorry, Sora, this darkness is too strong. People call me a hater because I recognize trash. Where Crystal Dynamics didn't need an infinity gauntlet to turn this game to ash. The whimsical aspect of this clip is beta testers are so used to the lies and empty promises straight from the developers that it was actually surreal that they didn't immediately roll into like a Ah oh, yes, here is one of the problems that the team is fully aware of and affects a small amount of people and other hilarious jokes that you hear them and the shills repeat, but they were silent. Do they not even want to commit to fixing bugs anymore? Bugs that cripple them on stream for everybody to see? This is the state of the game that people should be excited about Spider-Man coming to so they can nickel and dime these kids with $15 skins for Spider-Man. Marvel's Avengers game can't even promote itself being given away on Game Pass without shitting the bed. This is fact. If you consider it hate, you're pathetic. So when Marvel's Avengers claims real money microtransactions will be cosmetic only, oops, just kidding, N not, not that, not that anymore. Another lie to add to the pile. They nerfed progression. They spent time and development resources doing this. Remember, these are the same people who told you verbatim on their cringe streams that their resources are limited. They slap players in the face by telling them that based on the feedback that they got from you, the player, that skills were coming in too fast and that it's confusing and overwhelming. And now they're charging players for XP boosters and higher resource drops so players can better navigate obstacles that Crystal Dynamics patched in. You know, artificial difficulty? Give players a disease, then sell them the cure? This is literal villain shit. If Avengers were a racing game, players might expect new tracks to play on, but Crystal Dynamics would patch in speed bumps because that's less work. So their approach to content is to keep nerfing so heroes don't feel super in this superhero game, this looter with bad loot. Lack of variety, lack of endgame, bugs, crashes, these weren't the kiss of death for this game. The lack of direction and utter disrespect from the barely existent community team. Aw, oh, jeez, Rick. The puppets on strings that say and do anything for clout are of course free and entitled to celebrate whatever secures their potential paycheck, but I don't want a few with this studio for a game like Marvel's Avengers. The writing has been on the wall regardless of whether vocal illiterates could decipher what must have been hieroglyphics to them or not. Nah. And so triggered were the habitually incorrect defenders of this game that they fought and argued with themselves as though their sense of self-worth were entirely wrapped up in the image of this objectively poor quality Marvel game. They all have one thing in common. They're wrong. The exact sentiment that I heard repeated was, We have to contribute. We have to pay because we won't get another Marvel game like this. Wrong. Wrong again. Defending battle passes and $15 skins when the game launched at $60? Campaign replay six months later and you can't even select individual story missions. 10 minute missions with no added villain sectors, so still no variety, enemy spawning under the map a full year later. Can't even stream the game because the bugs will compromise it. In excess of three minutes, they sat there damn near in silence. But this is a dub to some people. This is a banger. We not paid to each their own. But I thank Crystal Dynamics for graciously bowing out 
and canceling the future of this game and its lazy ideologies, disgusting methods of monetization, and frankly just ugly ass, you know what I mean? You are not and never were a mobile game, and the most terrifying aspect of this whole ass game are the awful analytics of players that Crystal is collecting behind the scenes, the data on the behaviors of people, and specifically how much they were willing to tolerate with this incomplete bucket of AIDS. It's, it's got to be worth a fortune on its own. Genuinely scary stuff. This is what they'll put up with. Marvel's Avengers OLT still consistently crashes or traps people in the elevator as of today. And the unappealing non-Avenger that they fail to sell a vehicle for, even abusing the name of the Avengers, side characters in their own game, is currently sliding around in a pose and has been this broken for a month. Even though I'm incredibly thankful and appreciative to see representation of paralyzed people in gaming, seeing devs sit in silence a year out? More than four villain sectors in an Avengers game was a lot to ask, apparently. But a live service with no endgame? <sighs> oh yes. This is my reaction to Wolverine. My nigga. We going home. That better not be Wolverine! Please, God, please! And with the developers behind it, it was most gamers reaction to Insomniac. It couldn't be in better hands, talented, passionate, versed in comics, informed, aware of the games that came out before, and most importantly, in tune with the fans and their desires. You, you know that Skinner meme we keep using for Crystal Dynamics because they're out of touch? Insomniac is in touch. Just the thought of one day looking over a collection of beautiful, comic-accurate skins for Wolverine and knowing I won't have to pay for every single skin? High definition, beautiful, wasn't broke so they didn't fix it. Three-dimensional representations of the many appearances of these comic book characters. Realism is fine in doses, but it's truly psychotic to try to drain the color from the vibrant designs that have been used for merchandising. When you reduce the larger than life athletic physiques of these heroes, you strip the super from the hero. Real life, powerful people train to exhaustion and dedicate themselves to fitness to produce results that set them apart. Sex isn't exclusive to nice breasts and glutes. It doesn't matter what your orientation is. You've probably looked at a comic book motherfucker, man or woman. You probably looked at a Dragon Ball Z character, a JoJo's Bizarre Adventure character, and had appreciation for that physique. That's sexy because it's a physical representation of the work that they've put into themselves. Crazy muscles are like visual XP. You know, some people wear a badge or a medal, man. You got them muscles, people know where the fuck you been. It's dorky to say it that way, but it applies. Men and women are beautiful. And just because some designer hates women with breasts or is threatened by an actually jacked man, doesn't mean those of us who are comfortable with ourselves should suffer for this person's insecurity. And that's what these losers are, insecure. Just like the weirdos triggered by the Project Eve protagonist's body that had to compare it to shit from for, for spoken because anything else offends him and shouldn't exist because it's dated. Real inclusive, buddy. Just kidding. It's not. How dare she dress that way outside of what I like, the slut. She should cover up her body because I prefer that people dress the way that this person dresses and has the body type that this person has. I hope this dude walks around with a picture in his wallet to wave his finger at sexy women <laughs> who put work into their body and may want attention for that, may want a little bit of acknowledgement for that. No, no, no. Look like this girl. Cover up. When you design like this and try to tell people what they should look like, you lose purchases. When you design like this, you might as well be saying, you win China, Insomniac, thank you. We nerds want so little. 
to enjoy our little worlds and not have it compromised by people who seem to actively hate it. Yes, of course I agree that many fans are excessive and even crazy, but the heart of the fandoms passionately crave a future for the property, so of course that means change, of course that means evolution, but this shouldn't mean pandering. It shouldn't mean claiming inclusivity while excluding other people. It shouldn't mean retroactively going back and changing or ruining inoffensive things that fans clearly appreciated just for the sake of doing it. Because some triggered, insecure party is blowing it out of proportion. Thank you, Crystal Dynamics and Marvel's Avengers for bowing out because I would not have wanted a future with what you were establishing becoming the new norm moving forward. Insomniac is setting up a Marvel gaming universe, an MGU, if you will, with Spider-Man, Miles Morales, Venom, Wolverine, and who knows what other X-Men and heroes sharing the same universe taking the time to flesh them individually out before bringing them together. We've seen that work before. They said Wolverine's going for a mature tone, and I had to pinch my dick not to pee a little. They said Spider-Man 2 is gonna have a darker tone. Dark like how, man? You gonna, you gonna kill somebody, Insomniac? What if, what if it's Mary Jane that dies? What if Venom kills Mary Jane, so Spider-Man goes dark side, and he fucks up Venom and takes the symbiote? Listen to me. L listen to me. It's, ex it's exhilarating just to think about, because the sky's the limit with Insomniac. And whatever it is they do, is gonna be phenomenal. I usually don't give a shit about certain voices in gaming, but that's because I'm, you know, a little up my ass as a voiceover artist. But Tony Todd? As Venom? The Candyman. Be my victim, Candyman. Be my victim. This is going to be like James Earl Jones caliber. You know what I mean? This is going to be like Mufasa or Darth Vader, but in gaming. Okay? If they let Tony Todd perform, if they write some shit for him and just let this Venom is going to be beloved. I am the writing on the wall. I hear these rumors about a multiplayer game that people, you know what I mean? Even if it's not Marvel, I know that right now, Insomniac is setting something like that up. You know why? Because everybody's talking about that. They like that. It would be fun. We'd love for the future of Marvel Ultimate Alliance to kind of be buried in, in Insomniac's plan. They threw everybody a life preserver when these Marvel games sank. They secured not just a future, but a bright one. Love you. Catch you in the next one.